I tipped that box over on its face on the front where the door is going to go so I could get a little easier access to this heating element here set up the wires for the heating element I've got about a oh, foot or so of high temp wire here on this one and uh, it just uses a spade connector crimp on spade connector I took a unibit and drilled holes through the studs there put a grommet in uh, most of the ones that I run through this one here in the corner it runs through a stud in the cement board so I took some uh, red RTV and put in that hole there to uh, kind of shield around that stud where it goes through the sheet metal on there you know, I did the same thing you see I run it through grommet over here and that wire down and I did the same thing on this side where it hooks into the heating element I just run uh, six eight inches of high temp wire and then spliced it in some regular wire and uh, made a bundle now I bundled those up two wires together that go to to each burner and then I tied them all together into one bundle as it goes up and I'll put some RTV or I did put some RTV on that stud where it goes along there I think I'll put a wire tie on that to kind of hold it against the side there to keep it away from the face where the uh, cement board is going to be where it's going to get hot and uh, away from this edge here where the screws will go through to put the uh, siding on and we'll bring it all the way up to this uh, top up here on this left side and then I'll bring it out through the sheeting on the outside here to uh, put the control box in out here over here I was thinking about putting a control box on the right side this one here on this side will have the heating element in it so it might get hotter and the, the right side might not get as hot but the right side is where the door is going to swing to so that would be interfering with the control box every time you open the door it cover up the control box so we'll put it here on the left side anyway that's that much for now I think I'll turn that box over on its top and then put insulation in this bottom and uh, I'm gonna go get a piece of three-quarter inch plywood to, to put on the bottom so the bottom is good and tough that way I'll have something strong enough there that I can get the forks and the forklift underneath it to pick it up to move it around and it'll have something solid to sit on while we're I've working on it. I've got this thing flipped over on its top right now. This is the bottom. It uh, doesn't have anything else going for it. No wires or anything going through it. So I'll go ahead and insulate it. And then uh, I cut a piece of three quarter inch CDX and I'll nail it up there on that. The insulation I used is just uh, fiberglass. It's uh, certain teed. It's uh, R19. Oh, it's meant to go into a 15 and a half inch or 15 inch wall cavity, but it's six and a half inches thick, which is way thicker than we need for for this. So I just put it on there. I put one piece in here and stuffed it in underneath the edges, and then just kind of peeled it back. Uh, half of it off and then I took that half and put it over here in this other side and filled these cavities with uh, doubled up pieces so I'll go ahead and stick that plywood on there and screw it down and might do the uh, right side too. the right side the sides and the top are gonna have sheetrock on them and uh, the right side doesn't have anything except insulation on it maybe I'll go ahead and insulate it and put the sheetrock on it but I wanted something on the bottom uh, so that uh, I can slide it around on the bottom and and work with it without tearing it up and so that three-quarter inch plywood will make a good bottom and then this thing is big enough and heavy enough that if I have to move it around I'll probably have to do it with a forklift and and that'll make a good bottom for the forklift to go up on without tearing things up and punching through the bottom sheetrock wouldn't work very good for that and uh, neither would this uh, eighth inch tempered hardboard that I got that I was thinking about using on that but uh, well, I put sheetrock on the right side got the plywood down on the bottom and I did just like I did with the bottom I, I insulated that with uh, fiberglass insulation and then I cut a piece of sheetrock to fit on it because that thing flexes a little bit it might move around now on an ordinary wall it doesn't move and you put sheetrock screws in they hold fine uh, sometimes they'll pop and stuff if a wall moves or something, but uh, generally they're okay. But this thing will be moving a little bit, and it's still got some flex in it. Now, sheeting like that plywood makes it pretty rigid. 
so that'll help on the bottom but it doesn't help the joints between the the tops and the side or the bottom and the sides and the top and since those uh, other pieces down there the cement board is not tied in the top or the sides is not are not tied into the top that doesn't help add any rigidity to it either the frames individual frames real rigid but it doesn't make the whole assembly rigid the sheetrock would make it rigid but since it's so fragile the screws are liable to pull out on it and in fact these pieces of ply, uh, sheetrock I got were kind of like blows they were the last three pieces they had at the lumber yard and and uh, they are kind of crushed in a few spots and broken in a few spots and so anyway I put quite a few screws in them but I went ahead and glued them down with liquid nails now that will fill in the gaps the seams and stuff in there any air seams or any gaps and uh, that'll give a continuous bond to that sheetrock all the way uh, wherever it's applied I, I applied it all the way around the perimeter and down that center piece so that should give a good bond once it's cured it, better than the, the sheetrock screws will I used one inch sheetrock screws and I got fine pitch screws which are recommended to go on into uh, steel studs and they went into these industrial size studs these smaller studs just fine in fact uh, I overdrew, was able to overdrive them and, and pulled a little bit and then like on this piece here it was down a little lower than the piece it kind of pulled the piece over a little bit and so a couple places it cracked uh, pulled but uh, where I went into these standard uh, steel studs the I guess these are the regular kind you can buy at Lowe's or Home Depot or any place any lumber yard these sheetrock screws went in but then they would spin out they wouldn't pull they wouldn't pull flush into the sheetrock they spun out in the in the metal there just an observation I think I'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and flip that up on its face on the door end of it and insulate and sheetrock this back wall I don't need to do anything more to the back wall I've got it all done I've got the wiring running it and everything so I can insulate it and sheet it the top and the left wall We'll have to wait till I get the wiring done. I got to figure out what I'm going to do with the lights. I think I got an idea what I'm going to do for lights on there, but uh, we'll see how that works. I got the backside filled up with insulation. And what I was using before, the the stuff I had was Certainteed, and it's that yellow color. I had to break open a new bag, and it's a brown color. I didn't notice it was a different brand, but it's a Jane Mansfield or James Mansfield. Nobody probably knows who Jane Mansfield is anymore. Anyway, I got uh, some insulation behind the pan, and then this stuff is a lot thicker here on the back side. I left a little pocket open in here around where that uh, heating element comes out, because uh, this part will actually get hot right there. So I left that open there, so it's got some air circulation around it. Uh, maybe I'll think about what to do about that. I may. Uh, May drill a hole in that so it gets some air in there so it vents out the heat out of that. It doesn't build up too much heat in there. We'll see. Cut a sheet of sheetrock for that now and cover that up. 